Conan begins a spiritual journey to answer questions from his past when he heads to the white wastes of the north to test his mettle and find his faith. What will we find? Well, let's talk about it in our review of Conan the Barbarian number 13 from Titan Comics. See you in three. Writer Jim Zub takes a break from swashbuckling adventure and world-ending threats to send Conan on a spirit walk to find the reality of the Sumerian belief in Krom. When all you know is the power of your senses, forged in battle and strife, what purpose is there in blind faith? That's the question Zub deftly asks at the beginning of the Frozen Faith arc. Conan the Barbarian number 13 begins with Conan trudging through the frozen wilderness in the lands north of Samaria, carrying only fur-lined clothes and a Pictish blade. Readers of this series will remember where that blade comes from. His memory wanders back to days as a boy when he was taught by his father and the men of his village to fight with wooden swords. Conan wasn't the natural fighter and his elders chastised him for not showing the grit and determination needed to make him a warrior worthy of Krom's respect. When Conan questions the men concerning how and why they know Krom exists, the men are sort of taken aback. Knowing Conan has reached the age where he would question everything, as we all do and reach that age at some point, they tell him that they'll know ever watching Krom made them of steel when he feels that strength and power on the battlefield. Hats off to Jim Zub for launching a Conan tale that touches on a weighty subject, molding it into a context that looks at another side of Conan's character. Conan's relationship with Krom has always been, let's just say, complicated, so there's room to explore Conan's thoughts about Krom in his youth and what would happen if Conan experienced, like so many of us do, a crisis of, or questioning of faith. Additionally, one of the things we've appreciated about this series is how well Jim Zub creates new material while remaining true to the spirit of Robert E. Howard's writings. Here, Zub departs from that spirit by taking a more introspective route, something that Conan is typically not known for, but the tone and voice still feel true to who Conan was, is, and will be. In the present, Conan is trudging through the frozen forest when he happens upon a grizzly site. A pack of wolves invaded a small encampment and tore its occupants to shreds. Wolves eye Conan as more fresh meat and launch to attack. Conan holds his own for a time, but begins to lose ground through sheer numbers in the pack. During the fight, Conan remembers another moment of questions from his youth when he asked his father which mountain Krom watches from. The answer is succinct, but not illuminating. Jim Zub uses the mid-battle flashback to juxtapose how Conan remains focused on a challenge that could only be overcome by putting his faith in his strength and senses. How do you spend your life relying on your physical reality and still believe in something beyond what you can see, hear, and touch? Again, Zub touches on heavy philosophical questions, but deftly presents them in the heat of a gripping fight. Of course, Conan defeats the wolves. He strips the beasts of all he can use and scours the ravaged campsite for additional weapons. Needing a new challenge, Conan hunts the next day and crosses paths with a bear by the river. Rather than use a bow to slay the huge bear from a distance, Conan recalls the words of his father in a brief flashback where he longed to feel Krom by challenging his father with real blade and feel the true heat of battle. Through the mid-battle flashback, Conan still struggles with understanding why men believe in Krom. So he leans on the only lesson he can understand. As people often do, they search for their faith in the teachings and examples of others, hoping to find some process, formula, or recipe for making faith happen. Concluding that a connection to Krom could only be found when he's pushed to his limit in battle, Conan's quest for faith verges on recklessness. The issue concludes with a test passed and failed, an unwelcome visit from Aesir hunters, and a scantily clad spy watching from the frozen forest. Overall, Zub delivers the beginning of a new arc with all the hallmarks of a classic Conan story, including multiple fights to the death, inhospitable surroundings, and threats from all directions. But Zub takes the added step of using the familiar Robert E. Howard context to ask a universally complex and relatable question with no easy answers. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. Doug Braithwaite steps in for Robert De La Torre to start the Frozen Faith arc on a high note. To be clear, we're not saying Braithwaite is better or worse than De La Torre. His style is simply different. De La Torre's style is more classically inspired by the Bronze Age with deep shadows and heavy lines. Here, Braithwaite's style is more nuanced, lighter, and finessed, while still presenting a Conan story full of grim drama, and in short, Braithwaite does a great job. Looking at the broader context of this issue in the overall series, we know from the information provided on the preface page, the beginning of this arc takes place after the first arc concerning the Black Stone, 
evident by Conan's possession of the pick sword. But before the previous arc, which just completed when Conan fell in with a band of mercenaries after the death of Belit. Final thoughts, what do we think about Conan the Barbarian number 13? We begin a new quest for Conan in the frozen wilderness north of Samaria. But this time, he's on a journey to find Krom and his faith. Jim Zub delivers all the hallmarks of a classic Robert E. Howard story with the added twist of a universally relatable mission. Plus, Doug Braithwaite takes over for Robert De La Torre and the art quality doesn't drop one iota. It's written great and it looks great. Therefore, Conan the Barbarian number 13 from Titan Comics earns a 9 out of 10. In a comics industry where even the best-selling titles are hit or miss, this series has yet to produce a bad issue. But that's our opinion. I want to know what you think. Give us a thumbs up if you're a Conan fan, and leave a comment below to tell us your opinion of the new series since Titan took over the license from Marvel. Thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.